Are you struggling with your identity? Or could you possibly be struggling with your identity and not know it? Do you feel caught between two cultures and unsure of where you belong? Have you ever felt like you don't fit in either at home or in your host country? On this week's episode of China University, we delve into the often overlooked topic of identity crisis among international students in China. Tune in to hear how foreigners in China often struggle with their own identity, including myself. Welcome to China University. This is Chimsey, your student advisor. In this podcast, I will not only talk about the many professional, academic, and personal growth opportunities this country has to offer, but also I'll mention some of the major obstacles foreign students encounter while living in China. I'll share my experience, thoughts, and opinions, along with some realistic advice and genuine encouragement. Remember that you can now listen to full episodes not only on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts, in where you can find me as China University Student Advisor, but you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram as China University Podcast and Twitter as China Uni Podcast. If you have any feedback, comments, or topic ideas, please feel free to contact me on your favorite social media platform or send an email to China Podcast at Outlook dot com. Before I begin with today's episode, I want to wish you all a happy Chinese New Year, and I have an announcement to make. According to my podcast statistics, seventy percent of my audience listens to my episodes a week or two after I release every episode. So that and the fact that I'll be extremely busy for the next six months led me to make the decision of launching episodes every two weeks. Now I'm sure this will help me maintain the quality of my content without compromising my other responsibilities. Also, I gotta remind you that by subscribing to my podcast, sharing, liking, and commenting my episodes, you're helping me become more relevant and reach more people. But anyway, let me begin with today's episode. For those who may be unfamiliar with the term, an identity crisis occurs when an individual feels uncertain about their own identity, or when they feel pressure to conform to a certain identity that may not align with their true selves. This can happen for a variety of reasons, such as cultural expectations or the desire to fit in with a particular group. Identity crises can be a difficult and confusing experience, and they can take a toll on an individual's mental and emotional well-being. After I released the first episode of this podcast titled "Feeling Lonely in China," a friend of mine who is a Swiss psychologist heard the episode and sent me an article from the Journal of Health Psychology titled "Prevent the Blue." Be true to you. Authenticity buffers the negative impact of loneliness on alcohol-related problems, physical symptoms, and depressive and anxiety symptoms. Which pretty much shows that there is a link between authenticity, loneliness, and its consequences such as alcoholism and depression. The article emphasizes the importance of being true to oneself in order to prevent negative outcomes associated with loneliness. It suggests that by being authentic and understanding one's own values and beliefs, individuals can better cope with feelings of loneliness and find more meaningful connections with others. This is something that I have personally found to be true in my own experience. Overall, it is important to recognize that identity crises and feelings of loneliness can be a normal part of life, but by being true to ourselves. We can mitigate the negative effects and find ways to connect with others in a meaningful way. But anyway, I think I'll talk more about authenticity in future episodes. I'll leave the link to the article in the description of this episode. Before coming to China, I never felt a strong sense of pride for my Latino heritage. But after arriving in China, I wanted to openly identify with my Latino persona and make it known to those around me. However, I quickly realized that my physical appearance didn't align with the stereotypical view of what a Latino should look like. I have Caucasian features, and some people even accused me of faking being Latino because I didn't know how to dance salsa or bachata properly. And I gotta admit, this would later on make me feel a little bit insecure. 
this insecurity led me to signing out for salsa classes, singing reggaeton songs that I had heard back home but would never dare to sing out loud, and teaching people the proper way to drink tequila. God. Um, I realized that sometimes when you're abroad, you feel this need to act in a certain way just to fit in with what is expected of you by others. Do you know what I usually compare it to? I compare it to the 12th episode from the 15th season of The Simpsons title, Mailhouse Doesn't Live Here Anymore, and where Mailhouse tells Bart that he's moving to another city. But when Bart goes to visit him, he noticed how Milhouse had become a totally different person. He had dyed his hair blonde and adopted this bad boy persona and even gave Bart a wedgie in front of his new friends. All this so he could fit in with his new environment. This is something that I think many people can relate to, especially when they are in a new and unfamiliar place. And I totally understand it. Some people are repressed or feel oppressed by their families or their own culture. And I see how coming to China can be an opportunity for many of them to start over and be who they want to be and act how they want to act. And for many, myself included, coming to China became a journey to self-discovery. But as I saw in my own experience, this often comes at a cost of losing one's true self and individuality especially if you try too hard to become someone else. And just like Bart felt sad and disconnected from Milhouse when he was acting like a totally different person, people around you will feel disappointed and disconnected from you if you pretend to be someone that you're not. And this will most likely occur because sooner or later, people will see through the BS or your true self will spill over here and there. And we humans don't feel comfortable in the presence of dishonest acts, insincere behaviors, or set differently disingenuous people, hence the connection between loneliness and lack of authenticity. I think it's important to remember that true connections and friendships are built on authenticity and being true to oneself. For example, later on in the same Simpsons episode, Bart found a new friend in his sister Lisa, and they bonded over their shared interest and genuine experiences. In the same way, it's important to surround yourself with people who accept and value you for who you are. But in order to do so, you got to show people who you truly are. Maybe not by oversharing, of course, but by giving people a spoonful of each facet of your personality every now and then. And the things that I've seen here in China... As a Latino, for example, I have seen other Latinos in China acting more Latino than they ever did back home. But I've also seen Chinese students introducing themselves as foreigners, but knowing very little about their country of origin. I've seen African students in clubs and bars acting like American rappers or gangsters. But I can't blame them, though. Especially if they're relatively young and care a bit too much about how they are being perceived by other people. When I first came to China, I was 23. And I can't say I had everything sorted out by then. Now I'm 31 and I still think there are many things about my personality that I haven't figured out. As I was writing this episode, I was discussing the topic of identity with a friend of mine who is a monk. And I discovered the Buddhist concept of anatta which means non-self, and which, as far as I understood, is a doctrine that explains the ephemeral and constantly changing nature of things and how nothing is permanent, including your identity and personality. And this is when I decided to enter this avatar state and started thinking about how can I mix the Buddhist concept of anatta with the concept of the shadow by Carl Jung. If you are unfamiliarized with the concept of the shadow by Carl Jung, I'll briefly define it for you. The shadow is the concept introduced by the psychologist Carl Jung that refers to the parts of our personality that we have repressed or denied. These are often aspects of ourselves that we consider to be negative or unacceptable, such as feelings of anger, jealousy, or insecurity. 
The shadow can also include positive traits that we have rejected or suppressed, such as our talents or abilities. These repressed parts of ourselves exist in the unconscious mind and can influence our behavior and actions without us being aware of it. Chunk believed that by becoming aware of it and integrating the shadow into our conscious selves, we can gain a deeper understanding of who we truly are and become more whole. This can lead to greater self-awareness and personal growth. However, failing to acknowledge and integrate the shadow can lead to negative patterns of behavior and a sense of disconnection from our true selves. And in a similar way, failing to implement the concept of anatta into one's life can lead to a number of negative consequences. One of the most significant consequences is an increased sense of suffering. When we cling to a fixed sense of self, we become attached to our thoughts, emotions, and experiences. And this attachment can lead to feelings of anxiety, depression, and dissatisfaction. Which is exactly the point of the scientific paper I talked about earlier, which in a very subtle manner explains that lack of authenticity might leave you feeling depressed, lonely, and even friendless. In simple terms, while Anatta explains that our personality and self is constantly changing, the shadow represents the darker side of our personality, that side that we might not want to admit or show to others. But it's a part of us and by recognizing it, we can become more self-aware, understand ourselves better, and reduce our suffering. And reducing suffering is extremely important. Not so much because suffering is an undesirable state to be in, but because people who experience prolonged states of undergoing pain, distress, and hardship have a tendency to become bitter, cynical, and even malevolent. And needless to say, they tend to use harmful coping mechanisms that usually lead to alcoholism, eating disorders, and self-harm. Behaviors which often isolate individuals from others even more. I'll leave some relevant links in the description of this episode if you want to know more about authenticity, anatta, and the shadow. This leads me to the part of the podcast in where I give you some realistic advice and genuine encouragement. Number one, reflect on your values. You really got to reflect on your values. You got to take some time to think about what is important to you and what you stand for. This can help you gain a clearer sense of who you are and what you want in life. Number two, be open to new experiences. Sometimes our sense of self is shaped by the experiences we have. By trying new things, you may discover new passions or interests that can help you define yourself. Number three, talk to people you trust. Talking to friends, family, or a therapist can be helpful in gaining perspective on your identity crisis. They may be able to offer you a different point of view and help you see things in a new light. Number four, be kind to yourself. And I know I say this in almost every episode, but you gotta remember that an identity crisis is a normal part of life and that it's okay not to have everything figured out. Give yourself some time and some space to work through these processes. Number five, practice mindfulness. There are many ways to practice mindfulness, but the one I prefer is mindfulness meditation because it can help you stay present in the moment and let go of the need to cling to a fixed sense of self. There are many apps out there that can help you meditate, but the one I personally use is Headspace. And no, I'm not being sponsored, but Headspace, if you listen to this, please give me money or a free membership. Number six, embrace your shadow. Take the time to reflect on the parts of yourself that you have repressed or denied. Try to understand why and learn to accept them as part of yourself. Number seven, take action. Don't just sit and wait for the identity crisis to pass. Take active steps to explore new things, meet new people, and try new experiences. Number eight, and lastly, remember that the identity crisis is a sign of growth. It means that you're at a stage of your life where you're questioning things and seeking answers. And that's a good thing. And always remember that you're not alone. Many people have been through an identity crisis and come out stronger on the other side. 
In conclusion, an identity crisis is a natural part of life and it's important to remember that our sense of self is constantly evolving. Embracing the concept of anatta, or non-self, and understanding the shadow can help us navigate this process and gain a deeper understanding of who we truly are. It's also important to remember that to reach the heights, we must first acknowledge and accept the depths. As Carl Jung said, no tree can reach heaven unless its roots reach down to hell. Let me repeat that. No tree can reach heaven unless its roots reach down to hell. All right, that's it for today. For the next episode, I will talk about health problems in China because it's an important topic that affects many international students in China. From the physical to the mental, health issues can make an already challenging experience even more difficult. I will discuss common health problems that students may face. I hope this episode will provide valuable information for listeners and help them navigate any health-related challenges they may encounter during their time in China. Thanks for listening. I'll be back in two weeks with more information and advice for international students in China. But before I let you go, I gotta remind you that you can now listen to full episodes not only on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcast, and where you can find me as China University Student Advisor. But you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram as China University Podcast, and on Twitter as China Uni Podcast. If you have any feedback, comments, or topic ideas, please feel free to contact me on your favorite social media platform or send an email to China Podcast at Outlook dot com. You have just listened to China University podcast. This was James, your student advisor. See you next time.